paving. Today we're going to show you how we go about doing some walkway paving. So today the whole process starts, we need to excavate this area out and get it down to allow for 100 millimetres of compacted base and to allow for in this particular case for a 40 mil quadro paver in height. So with walkway paving, as I said, we're going to use a minimum of 75 mil of compacted base up to 100. We're putting about 100 mil of base here. You can either use like a compacted uh, crusher dust or row base. Generally, we'll use a row base and compact that and screed off the top with a thinner material like a compacted wash river sand or with packing sand or crusher dust to get that next level, to get it nice and level to get your pavers down. Once that's done, you really want to set out your area. So you want to set it out for your string lines uh, and really do a little bit of planning about how that paving is going to work to where you're going to have your cuts, where your lines are going to join up and how it's going to look. And as you're putting these pavers down, you don't want them to be buttoned up hard up against each other. You want to leave a small gap, usually between two to three mil between each paver. This allows for you to put your wash beach sand or your pave set sand material between the pavers. Now this is important because if you put them hard up against each other, you can't get the sand in and they won't bed in properly. And another reason is if you're doing a driveway, although this is a walkway area, but if you're doing a driveway and you have your pavers too close together, when you drive on them, they rub up against each other and they'll chip. So you need to have that two to three mil gap. While you're setting out the pavement, it's really good to think about where your cuts are gonna be. If you've got really small cuts, you want them to have them up against the edge of a building or you would like to have a border paver around your paver so that small cut doesn't just fall out. It's got something hard to sit up against and looks a lot neater in your paving. As I said, this particular paver is a walkway paver. We're using an Abri paver. We have that two to three mil gap and we're gonna use what we call pave set to go between them. Like sand, but it has a silicon base in it that when you wet it down, it actually sets hard. You really need to make sure you sweep that off properly and even get a blower and blow it off. When you get that on, you don't wanna leave any of that sand on top of the pavers. You wanna just get your hose and you wanna slightly mist it in. So you wet it in, but not too much. If you put too much water on, it'll actually take the chemical out and it won't set properly. And once that's done, uh, we always should have a concrete haunched edge around the edges, and that's to hold the paving in. This can actually be done before the sanding in most cases. Get that concrete haunch edge in, then you actually sand your pavers to lock them all in. If you haven't got that concrete haunch edge, you can use a timber edge, or you might be hard up against a retaining wall on a house and you don't need an edge at all. But if you haven't got those hard surfaces around you, you really need a concrete haunched edge to hold that in. And make sure you get the concrete right up underneath the edge of the paver, because that's gonna stop it dropping on the edge and really hold it in. That's an important part that a lot of people forget. And then at the end, you end up with a beautiful job like this, a nice flat area. So with this project now, it's really created a beautiful outdoor area that's usable. In my opinion, looks nicer than concrete. So this sort of area here, you're looking at a budget, roughly somewhere between eight and $9,000 to do this from start to finish. Because remember, there's more than just laying the pavers. Now you've seen the process, you know it goes into it.